Hey everybody, this is Rustin with Metalholic Magazine and Access Entertainment. With us today, the amazing Ida Hawkland of Triosphere. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. How are you? I am doing absolutely wonderful. You know, I was working on my year-end list of albums a couple of weeks ago, and then I got the new Triosphere album, and I'm like, crap, now I've got to rearrange this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That was great so, to hear. I'm, I'm sorry for you, but great to hear. <laughs> well, and you know, this marks the band's 10th anniversary. Has has it gone by quickly, or does it seem a little surreal to you? Oh, God, it's gone by extremely quickly. It's like, what? 10 years? Nah, we're just getting started. <laughs> so, um, and, and that we're kind of like, for, for us, we're, we're marking uh, the 10th anniversary in February next year. So we were kind of cheating out a bit, <laughs> but it's correct. We did start up in the autumn of 2004. So now it's gone by extremely fast. It really has. And so, um, ugh. Feels uh, ten years it sounds awful long time. <laughs> well, and here you guys are ready to release the third album, The Heart of the Matter. You have mm. taken four years between each album so far. Why always such a long break between records? Good question. Um, uh, the the easy answer is just that we are always really thorough when we are writing material, and uh, we uh, we never. Uh, put the uh, the end mark on a song before we really feel that it's perfect. And if we can't manage a song to be perfect in our opinion, then we, it's getting put aside and uh, until a later moment. So uh, we we spend a lot of time on um, uh, arrangements, on all kind of details uh, for myself on the vocal lines and the lyrics and rewriting them and rearranging and. And uh, and um, very many different kind of parts. You also have the the strings and the keyboards and the piano sections, and uh, we just spend a lot of time to get it the way we want. Um, uh, but of course, also uh, an important element since we released the uh, the road less traveled is that we've all w also been touring uh, a bit, quite a bit and uh, putting a bit of focus just on promoting that album and and the band. And uh, we've never been a band that's been able to really write at the same time as we were focusing on touring and promoting and also we've never been that kind of band that just walks in on the rehearsal room and whip a song and there it is it takes time <laughs> it's <laughs> so, a um, longer creative process yeah but, but I just have to say that we really we will do our best to try to uh, get there uh, on a shorter time for the fourth album than we've done so far. <laughs> well, let's let's stick to talking about the heart of the matter now because that's yeah. just getting ready to come out and it's such a fantastic album. But tell us about the heart of the matter from your perspective, sort of where it's taking us relative to Onward and the road less traveled. I think uh, we're quite um, already at the the first uh, songs, the first riffs and arrangements that Marius the guitarist and composer of Trisphere, uh, when he started coming with uh, with new material, uh, we quickly understood that this was an album that was going to be placed quite uh, in the middle of Onwards and The Road Less Traveled sound-wise. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, briefly summed up, it is uh, it does have the uh, as we feel the the bite and the attack and uh, and a bit and the speed from onwards, but mm -hmm. the emphasis and the the epic elements of um, the, the emphasis on melodies and uh, the epic feel that you have on the road less traveled. And so when that is the, like the the fundament, uh, we uh, we certainly do feel also that since we released the road less traveled with all the experiences and everything that we've. Um, uh, we've done the last four years. We have be become much better songwriters and individual musicians. So that also, uh, we uh, we definitely feel that the it's it's an even more mature album. Um, we felt that we took quite a, a good step forward from onwards to um, uh, to the road less traveled. We moved onwards, if you like. <laughs> right. Uh, and but then even even more so from uh, the road less traveled to the heart of the matter. So a much more mature album, but uh, a combination, you might say, of the two previous ones. Sort of like both a continuation and an evolution. Yes, to see it much more uh, elegant, elegantly. <laughs> <laughs> now, and you guys have a new drummer in Kenneth Tarnaby, and did he or or and I'm going to butcher his name. Did he or Oren Eric Jorgensen play on the new album? Which one of them did the work? 
Yeah, that was uh, Örjan, and uh, it's a very, very difficult name to do in English. <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, uh, Örjan um, was uh, was part of the process of making the album, so it was. Uh, um, it would have been. We we would have been very sad if he hadn't done the drums because that would have meant that we almost had to start from scratch again with someone else. Right. So, uh, but it was uh, it more or less never a question that he was not going to do it. So, it ended up as a natural ending point for him uh, to to do the drums for the album and then permanently leaving the drummer's tr- chair over to uh, to uh, a new guy. Uh, so the drums were actually uh, uh, they were finished recorded um, uh, a bit time before we met uh, Kenneth uh, who um, well uh, unofficially joined the band in March this year so uh, and that was a result of a uh, well uh, uh, an extensive search we have we have had uh, session drummers already since 2011 on tours uh, and uh, we also gotten some video d- auditions from other drummers and also even from uh, uh, f- around Europe and uh, fantastic uh, drummers extremely talented but like it was something just uh, missing it wasn't the that unique chemistry that we've had inside the band for all these years uh, well we were we were kind of we were prepared for that. That was an element that we had to like work to get back. But we were still hoping to maybe, maybe find this guy where everything just clicks immediately. Uh, and that thankfully happened when we finally met uh, Kenneth in uh, March. As I said, it was um, it was actually quite weird. Uh, he came in uh, to the re- rehearsal room. We played for an hour, and everything was like it felt like we had been playing together for the last ten years. So um, the transition has been more smooth that we could ever dare to have uh, jumped off so nice. great guy we feel that we're more on track than ever yeah fantastic so I, i'm not going to ask you which is your favorite song on the album or anything like that because it's still too new it's still too fresh and i know <laughs> exactly proud. but if if somebody were to if you had to pick one song from the album that say is most representative of the album as a whole which song would you have them listen to oh that's actually just as difficult question <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think I will. I would like to say I would like to rephrase the question uh, on the, up to which song is the best is does represent Trisphere the best, and okay. then I would actually say the Sentinel. But thank you. It. That was my favorite song on the album. Ah, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I, I really, I really feel that it's very, very Trisphere uh, the way I see it. But I think all the songs are and. Uh, yeah, no, but I'm, uh, let's just, uh, I have to pick one, so I'm going to pick that one. Well, it's the, the entire album's fantastic. The Sentinel, like I said, it's my favorite, but that could change tomorrow because I keep listening to the album over and over again, and I keep finding other things, little nuances that I really love that elevate songs, which is one of the nice things about this album. It's there's those, And we've been missing this in rock and metal for years, is the nuances that used to make the stuff we grew up on so classic. Yeah, awesome. Oh, that's that's fantastic to hear. Thank you so very much. Now, as you already know, the fans and our staff tabbed you as among the top female bassists this year. How yes. how do you feel about such recognition when it's also attached coincidentally to the fact that you're a woman? I, I think that was uh, that was really awesome. Uh, I was just so happy to be uh, in the poll at all when it first started, and uh, to then actually make uh, make the final cut into the, the top list that was um, uh, it's really, really I was really excited about that that was really really cool and um, there's um, I think also what's really great about that list uh, is that it shows how many uh, how many cool female musicians there actually are out there in the, in the metal scene at least here in Norway I think uh, most people listening to metal probably think that there are a handful tops <laughs> right. play, playing uh, and, and that list just shows how many there are and how many really good uh, female uh, musicians so um, it, it serves uh, it serves a great purpose in just awareness 
around uh, how many good female musicians there are. Well, that was the goal, you know, it's because uh, there was some initial backlash, and I think it has more to do with the magazines that do the hottest women in metal and stuff like that. But I, gr- yeah. I grew up in the 70s where they, we used to read Cream and Krang and all these magazines that had the best vocalists, the best bass, the best. And the only differentiation between sex was male vocalists and female vocalists. And even then, there was few female vocalists. And there are so many more women who are involved in hard rock and metal, and we want to raise that awareness and bring that recognition. And the really mm-hmm. interesting thing thing is when i talk to women who are are in that genre the genre that we're in i'll ask them i'm like you know can you think of another female guitarist that you that you're impressed by or another female bassist or drummer and literally i none of them have any names to give me i mean it's like you know i ask a female guitar player you know who else do you like that's female and they're like um i don't know orianthe lita ford and i'm like yes those are the only (laughs) names you know really yeah. And it and it just told me there's so much lack of awareness out there, and that was the hope of all of this is is to bring so many new names to the table that people can really get a feel for what's happening. Because even though there's so many more women in the genre right now, it is mm-hmm. still woefully underrepresented, and that just proves the point right there. When the people who are actually doing it can't even come up with names of their own, unless it's somebody so famous. That... Yeah, exactly. Uh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> But so, um, uh, now you actually started out on guitar in your teens before you picked up the bass when another yeah. band asked you, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, well, I, st- I started learning the, uh, the gu- playing the guitar, and I did have uh, an idea that I wanted to learn everything. Uh, I even had a, s- uh, a small period where I actually tried to uh, learn to play the drums, but I kind of just concluded that uh playing drums you have you're that's a different kind of breed of people <laughs> right it's it's not for me so i just had to to give up on that but well at least uh, first and foremost uh, it wasn't i hadn't i think i just i started my own band just a few months before these guys came and asked me if i wanted to play the bass as well uh, and uh, and also like i i thought okay it would be cool i like to try to do different things play in different kind of bands and learn as much as possible so well, I think it's great that you only had the one bass your entire career. Yeah, I know. That's also a, that's a, that's a weird thing. Uh, but it turned out to be, a, well, like I also wrote um, a lifelong uh, love affair with the, with the bass guitar, but um, also that specific bass guitar. So um, I, I think I'm. I think I'm just really. If I find something that I like that works, then I'm just sticking to it. Why change the winning team and everything? But uh, uh, I have a, I have a few uh, few male friends who who are bass players who um, who've known me since I started playing bass, and they're still laughing about that. I still have that old Washburn, and and even more so when I tell them, that, yeah, well, I finally bought myself a new one. Uh, but it's the exact same. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, what can I say? I'm a weirdo, but um, I I love that bass. It just uh, fits me, suits me. <laughs> well, and it's interesting that the first bass that you get that's yours, you start out with a five string, not with a four string, like everybody else. Like I, I know, I know. Committed from the beginning, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> now you've said that that the people you play and perform with are the people who inspire you. But what were you listening to that helped inform your path musically when you were coming up? Well, I'm 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 a, I'm a big bit upside down actually when it comes to that part as well uh, because I I didn't discover metal until I was uh, about fourteen and a half, and then I started to learn to play the guitar when I was fifteen and started first band when I was sixteen. So it kind of went a bit fast, but uh, but I actually I um I remember. This is a bit much, much information, but I remember <laughs> when I was about like ten, eleven, my brother was listening to Metallica and Guns N' Roses, and I thought that was really noisy, awful stuff. I couldn't understand why he was listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I'm not sure, but just something happened. So what I started listening to when I started listening to metal was black metal. So I started my uh, metal career with uh, with uh, Satyricon and Emperor and all these Norwegian um, um, pioneers within extreme metal. Uh, and then it just, over the years, uh, smoothly uh, went over to more hard rock and then down to the really 80s hard rock uh, bands. So um, 
I think just in in general, um, I would say that there's one album that's always been very inspirational for me, even though not necessarily the the way I play, but it is the um, Emperor's album Anthem to the Welking at Dusk, because I was so fascinated how they could combine very melodic, epic parts with very extreme uh, expressions. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so I was always, I was really fascinated by that, uh, because I, I knew that I, what really... What I really loved was melody, but in a very, in a with a rough edge, you might say. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's been uh, it's been much extreme metal, and then uh, eventually uh, a lot of much softer hard rock. <laughs> <laughs> and somewhere so, in the two came Triosphere. Somewhere in between the two. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And then last year uh, you appeared with uh, Thomas England of Evergrey on a track for the uh, episode album. I believe it was Phantasmagoria, if I remember correctly. How'd that all come about? Well, um, uh, Samuel Arkan, who uh, who is the mastermind be- be behind Episode and, and has written all the music, uh, etc., he um, he had heard the Roadless Travel, so he sent me an email uh, and uh, presented himself and the project and asked if I could be interested in doing one of the characters for his upcoming uh, album. Uh, and uh, I checked out the music and I, sa- I thought this sounds really really interesting um, I've always been quite strict on not uh, involving myself in in other things uh, besides triosphere because uh, I, well that in my opinion it's it's best that I'm not spreading uh, myself around all many two different things gotcha. but uh, but that uh, that concept sounded really good and of course for me it was also a, um, a safe quality mark that he was also on the same label uh, as our, as us so I talked also to the label manager and and uh, so I, I felt that this this was a this was a very good project this was a really nice guy and of course when he then also told me that he had in mind that I would do a duet with Tom uh, I was very excited because uh, when Evergrace in Search of Truth uh, came out in I think it was uh, 2000 or 2000 or and one mm-hmm. perhaps uh, I was I, I think I listened to that album nonstop for months so um, I was a quite huge Evergrace fan that actually uh, that album has actually been quite important for me as well uh, in terms of uh, inspiration and right. uh, yeah, so so that was uh, that was uh, pretty fantastic for me to go from being the super fan and then standing uh, and doing a duet. That was um, that was uh, the whole thing with uh, with joining in on that project was a great experience and fantastic people. Nice. Well, and it's it's interesting because my last question in that vein was, you know, if if is there one person that you would still love to do like a duet or a cameo with? In terms mm. of performing with, uh, let's see. Uh, I know. I I think time and again there are many many musicians I would have loved to do a duet with. And one thing that we have been thinking, at least back in the days, uh, I'm not sure how good it would work, but it would be interesting at least. We we would have been to do a duet with the Bonnie Tyler. <laughs> 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 but um, but more seriously, um, hmm, uh, let's see. I, I can't honestly come up with a name uh, from the top of my head right now. But uh, of course, uh, it should have been. It should be a singer that has a voice that's very distinctly different from mine. Of course. Well, and you have a, a very somewhat distinct voice anyway, in terms of you know, because we were talking a little bit about women in hard rock and metal, and there's usually two two or three different types of female voice and and yours Mm. is unique from them because you're able to do those really beautiful clean melodies but you also have that those times where you get sort of that gruff edge to it that sort of reminds me in some aspects of uh, a younger doro or something Mm. like that but you you managed to get both of those in there and it's very well done so Thank you so very much. I, th- I really feel that I have improved much over the years with reference to, to that. That I have been that I've been able to develop all those those different ty- kinds of, of singing. Uh, in the beginning, it was m- almost only the the gruffy, uh, gritty edge. Uh, but I've, um, I think that I've, I've also been over the years been able to do the more softer parts as well. So uh, well, thank you for saying it. I'm. I'm always trying to improve. <laughs> and and you you are, and the band is, and obviously that all plays out on the new album, The Heart of the Matter. 
thanks so much for taking the time. It's an honor to get a chance to talk with you. And hopefully one of these days we'll get a chance to see you live. We'll, we'll do our very best. We have the 70,000 tons of metal in Florida in January, but then you have to join the cruise and get into international uh, waters. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully we'll get to see you one way or the other. Thanks again so much for taking the time, and we'll talk with you real soon. Thank you so much.